actually a, a Vision Quest retreat, which is basically focused on meditation, which is basically combined to fasting in order to give you the optimum potential at the end of the day. Fasting is actually quite a amazing gift because the mostly what we do is subconsciously we suppress all our emotions and suppress our highest potential therefore when we fast we actually all the old emotions actually comes up to the surface so it actually gives you the potential and it gives you the opportunity at the end of the day to deal with the core of the emotion to deal with the core of the, the main issues we have in our lives. So the moment that we fast, we actually detox the whole system and begin the garbage of emotions, the garbage of, of um, negative thoughts. It all surfaces and it gives you the opportunity at the end of the day to, to banish that old beliefs, that old thoughts, that old patterns, which no longer serves you. So at the end of the day, you can go and step into a higher potential and a higher state of being and a higher state of becoming. It's a very safe space. It's a very sacred space. It's people who have walked away. Um, to give you an idea, I fast already for 21 days of my life. I know exactly the ins and outs. I fast. Um, uh, monthly for a whole week. Um, I've sat in silence for 12 day, days in absolutely silence. I know, I know the gift what it is. So I think when you automatically when you're in your space where people know what it entails, then it's so much they know exactly what you're going through. And um, as, because I know, I know when the shadow is coming up, I'm going to meditate basically with you. I'm going to sit with you, I'm, going to, I'm a shaman, I'm going to do shamanic practices. So when that shadow is too hectic and too intense, we're going to basically work with that energy and we, which is trapped and we're going to banish that energy and going to remove that energy out of, that, out of your energetic system, out of your body, out of your consciousness and automatically you will feel lighter and you can be able to go to the next level. Um, so it will, it's a safe space, it's people who have done the work, it's people who know exactly what is going to happen, how it feels to be and to sit in your shadow, but not to fear the shadow. So mostly we fear the shadow because it's the unknown parts, it's the wounded parts of the shadow, it's the wounded parts of the psyche, it's the parts which holds us from our highest potential, highest gifts. It's those, it, it creates ignorance, it creates fears, it, it creates old behavior, old belief patterns. And if you're ready to shift that, then this is the space in, in order to do it. Because it gives you a great opportunity, it's safe, it is sacred, and you will, will the whole time will be supported amazingly as well. It's so easy because in the moment, in the moment something surfaces up, what do we do? We go quickly to our cell phone. I quickly want to go to a shop. I quickly want to do this. I quickly want to eat. I quickly want to, um, I quickly want to work in the garden. You quickly want to read a book. I quickly want to watch a movie. So the whole time we keep ourselves busy and we never actually give ourselves the opportunity to look at what is really there what is really the core of our own being. We don't understand what is who we actually are. Therefore, with the whole time we become um, according to the condition of what the world and what the society and what other people expect of us. And we never actually step into our own unique self and our own unique truth. And therefore, the whole time we wait for someone else to save us, but you can only actually save yourself. And the moment that you realize the potential and the gift of in yourself that you are the savior and you will see throughout all of the history silence was always the key when jesus went up the mountain he sat in silence for 40 days and 40 nights there he meet, met his own demons and he, and he transformed the demons and he came back in order to do more healing on a different level on a higher level of consciousness the buddhist knows it Every religion knows the gift of silence. Therefore, silence is the way back home to know why you're here, what's your purpose, and what is withholding you and from your gift. Because at the end of the day, in silence, you will realize that you are your own enemy. And in order 
to transform that enemy and to banish that enemy out of your energetic field. This is a great space in order to know and to discover the gift of silence, the gift of truth. So to face your shadow is quite scary. Um, the moment that you're tired of suffering in your own life, then you're actually ready to face your own shadow. So suffering happens in many subtle levels. So mo many times it happens through insecurities, through relationships, through loss, through grief, through betrayal. Sometimes, many times you will find that there's one pattern in your life which keeps repeating itself over and over and over. And that is the key to the darkest, deepest part of the shadow. In order to go back, and if you're tired of that part, of that shadow, of that, that a part of that aspect which keeps repeating, then this is quiet, then it's quiet, then, then you're actually ready to face your own shadow. So many times people go in one relationship and then they exactly they go into another relationship and exactly the same experience happens over and over and over. So, or they go from one career to another career and the same experience keeps happening. So the whole time it actually feels, it doesn't matter what career I choose or where I work or who's the family members or um, who I'm dating, the same thing keeps repeating itself. So many times people experience betrayal over and over and over, or they experience rejection over and over and over, or they battle with a deep insecurity, or they battle they, of a, a feeling of emptiness. Doesn't matter where they go, they keep, they keep feeling a sense of emptiness. And that part of is the part of the psyche, which is the shadow. So when you, whenever someone is ready, and um, to, to break the pattern in their own life of, of destructiveness, then automatically this is the, the place to do it. Then you are ready to face your shadow. So it takes, it takes guts, it takes balls. Um, it's really, um, you're gonna see really the essence of who you are. And you, yeah, and you must be ready to face that part of your existence because only then you'll be able to stop the suffering in your own life. It's really not a fun, relaxing weekend, and that's the whole idea. Because many times, the whole time in our lives, we crave for fun and we crave for relaxing, and we never deal actually with the core of what, why we're here. And many times people lie on their deathbeds and they wondered, what was my purpose? Why were I here? And they actually missed the mark of their own existence. So the whole idea is of this, of this weekend retreat is actually for you to realize, why are you here? Because your existence is a message to this world. You are here to bring something much greater and much better to this world. So basically, yes, it's not fun. But many times people crave for fun and they crave uh, the whole time they find fun outside of themselves. So they find fun in drinking, they find fun in sex, they find fun in, um, um, they get attached actually, the fun part in life gets actually and distorted through attachment. People get attached to certain things, they get attached to people, they get attached to relationships. And that is actually what people based on, on fun. So that's also the origin of mostly of addictions. So actually if you go back and say, you know what, this weekend is not fun. Maybe I have to deal with the suffering because after the suffering, there actually comes a space of freedom. So many people search for freedom, but they're waiting for the country to, to give them freedom, or they're waiting for other people to give them freedom, they're waiting for their family members to give them freedom. And because they don't have freedom, they, they blame everyone else, and they blame the system, they blame the past, they blame the future, and people never actually take ownership and responsibility of where they are at and what they are busy in order to create. So what, what is happening? The moment you realize, wow, actually I am suffering, and you realize the intensity of suffering, then you're actually equipped in order to change it. But we can't change what we don't know which we're actually holding. Because the whole time in our lives, we're actually just blocking this part of ourselves out. 
And because we block it out, it actually manifests in disease. It manifests in things in our lives which is not that fun. So I would say, rather deal with the stuff which is not fun in a very sacred and a safe space. Because otherwise, all the stuff which you don't want to deal with is going to catch you up. It's going gonna, it's gonna to hit you in the moment when you least expect it in your life. That's the, how the shadow always works. The shadow always comes out at the times when you least expect it. And that's when people say, oh, my life is so hard, my life is so terrible. And they still don't want to deal with the hardness and the terribleness of their own life. Therefore, what all they do is they, they numb out. They go out, have more sex. They go out having more party. They go out having more um, WhatsApp, a phone addiction, tele, um, tele, television addiction. And the whole time they get actually dependable on everything else. And the more they become unhappy and the more they lose who they are. And they start having, they starting to please everyone else. And they start to forget who they really are. And, and, as they, and, they, and if, they can't, if they can't please other people, they feel they don't have any purpose. They feel they have no sense of living. So yes, it's not fun. That's, that's the core. But the end, of, the end result is you're busy creating fun. You're busy creating freedom. All of the master teachers who walked this earth knew this, that you have to go inward because your inner world is an expression of your outer world. So if you want to change your outer world, you have to change the inner world. You have to experience the pain in order to see the pain. You have to experience fun in order to truly can experience fun and to be the creator of fun and to be creator of freedom in your life. Nothing in life we start creating that quickly, but it's a step at a time in the right direction at the end of the day, which kind of gives us the fun in life. Because life is actually effortless and it's actually, there's a freedom in life to be loved. And life is here to serve us. And if life is not serving you and if your life is not effortless, I can tell you your life is actually not fun. Then you're only addicted to attachments. And the whole thing of this whole weekend, you become detached of everything and you become open to experience the wholeness of your own being, the freedom of consciousness, the freedom of your existence in a safe and sacred space, then you will know God and you will know that you are a part of God and you are needed and you are, import you are important as anything else on this planet. You are separate of nothing and you are connected to everything. And in that, there's freedom. And in that, you become the creator of life. You become the creator of peace. You become the creator. And you will stop searching for thing, people to make you happy and for life to make you happy because you will know how to do it yourself. So it happens quite, for some people, the deeper you go, the quicker it happens. Because actually how consciousness basically works is, <coughs> If I battle with insecurity and you go in a state of consciousness and you, you sit of that insecurity, what happens, you go back into every aspect of your life where insecurity uh, arises, which were the origin of insecurity. So you will go back into an experience of insecurity or betrayal or rejection, whatever the issue you want to work with, and you will have that experience in mind, in consciousness, it feels extremely real. Maybe you were 20 when you had that first experience. Or maybe you will go back to that experience. But you will go back to all the experiences in your life, which holds that frequency and that vibration in your life. And at the end of the day, when you dealt with each experience, as, as with all its demons and all its attachments, Every time you deal with the experience, it vanishes. Then you're busy transforming that experience into something new, into something beautiful, something which you want, 
something which other people want. And the more you, you, you start to treasure the soul, you start to awaken the soul, you start to awaken the heart, and then you will actually experience real, real love, real freedom, and real, um, real peace. Out of a retreat like this, you will find people who is absolutely dedicated to your support. So we have me, I'm a counselor, I'm a life coach, I'm a spiritual coach, I'm a shaman. Um, I've studied quite hundreds of different modalities in order to support each individual who enters into my space. Omri is an amazing teacher. Um, she's, I don't know, she can explain to you exactly what she does and who she is. Um, I will explain my side of the story. So, basically, you will never be alone. Um, you will be supported on an energetic level. Um, basically, you can choose your support as well. So you can choose what you want to bring into your space. Um, we're going to give you guidance of certain aspects what you can work with, it's like certain tools. We're going to give you maybe, if you like crystals or if you like, um, I have written a book. So I'm going to give you the book with certain questions which will support you to go deeper into the, um, into the shadow part of your existence as well. Um, Almeri does some tarot card readings. If you're open for that, that is what you ca can expect and receive as well. Um, I'm a shaman, so what basically I'm going to do is I'm going to feel that energy. I'm going to sit and meditate sometimes with you. And each person is going to have a chance, if they open to that, to have a shamanic healing experience. Because many times when we sit in the shadow, the shadow becomes so overwhelming. And we feel if, if we cannot shift it, it feels like a barrier. And in that moment, what we do is uh, are going to use a shamanic practice and actually to shift that energy 360 degrees out of the consciousness into, so that you can hold a different way of being. So many times we need that support in order to shift that level of, of darkness which sits in our own psyche. So that's one part of the aspect which you can receive. Um, there will be herbs, there will be um, uh, smudging, all of that in order to support you to, to release and to go deeper into the shadow part and to release every level of the shadow. I also do aromatherapy um, massages. So aromatherapy itself has amazing essence which supports the body to heal. And when I actually give you a full body massage with your permission, I will actually, um, uh, when I'm massaging actually the body, I, I go actually help you, your body to go deeper into the shadow of the body itself. And it actually, with that massage, also goes with the intention to release that shadow out, shadow parts as well. So many parts, there's many aspects. Um, we have a lot of tools, we have a lot of techniques. For each individual, it can be something different. So whatever you need, that will be your guidance. Sometimes you will need maybe someone to speak with. Maybe you will, um, preferably not, but if you, really that is what you need, that's fine, we can, we can arrange that for you. So whatever you need, there will be the assistance and the support in order to um, accom accommodate your needs and your desires so that you can shift. It's all about you. The focus is about you. We're here to serve you. So, no one, we're not focused on ourselves. It's a selfless weekend where we, we work, we're willing to work 48 hours through the night as well. But everything is here to serve you. My name is Al Marie, and I am really excited to welcome you to Kairos. Kairos means the right time, infinite time, and that is what this space is all about. It's about giving you a safe environment. There's a, there's a healing power on this farm. We are situated in the ancient Khalis Mountains. There's a wisdom and a patience energy in, the, in the, the, the ground under your feet that will assist you during this weekend. 
Um, during the weekend, what you can expect is on the Friday night when you arrive, I will prepare a meal for you that is, ser that is served with love and prepared with love and with intention to make the weekend as productive as possible for you. So during the rest of the weekend, I will be available with Quinton to support you. If you just need somebody to sit with you, I am there. If you want somebody to just listen, I will be there. This is a non-judgmental, safe space. We, we open the space to you because we know what it's like to wait on the world to make you happy. And then the freedom that comes with that when you realize that you are the creator of your own reality. I created this farm eight years ago when I lived in England. And here I am today on a farm opening it up to you. During the weekend as well, you will be physically protected. It is a farm, but we have security. It is a very, very safe space. But you will also be protected spiritually and energetically. Quentin and I will work with you over the weekend to make you feel safe as you go through a path that will significantly change your life forever. We also chose the date of the weekend this time around to go with the waning moon. I love the moon because it really speaks to me on a quiet level. The sun is life-giving and it's, it's, it's abundant and it's warm. The moon is quiet and patient. And the moon is usually there when we awake at night, when we have to face our demons and we have to we worry, we walk in the dark. And so the waxing moon is a time to banish. It's a time when the moon is shrinking. And with that, it's the imagery in my head as it takes away, it's the, it's the space to give your worries, to give your fear, to give your pain, and to give that and, and get rid of that. In your, in your sacred space as well that we, that we will provide to you, you will have several tools that you can use as representations of you becoming free. None of these things are actually making you free. I'm not saying that it's, it's magic things, but a lot of times words is so constricting and words can be so um, limiting where actually when you use imagery, it can be so much more, it can be so powerful. And so what we will do is we will give you ways that whatever you feel comfortable with, as you get rid of things, as you get rid of the things that no longer serve you, that you can have a physical representation of getting rid of that. You'll have a fire pit if you feel you want to burn something, you want to burn a letter, you want to burn a belief, you do that. We will have water if you feel that you want to wash, that you want to clean. We will have oils. There is, there is a lot of tools available for you to help you to go through this process and come out a healed, full person understanding your purpose. And then, of course, you know, on the Sunday when we finish, we are going to celebrate because then it is you have gone through a quest. You have gone through the, through the shadows. You've gone through the valley of death and you've made it and you've come out in whatever shape or form your weekend changed you, you will come out having a better understanding of who it is that you are. So on that Sunday, we will have a feast here on the farm. And, and I hope that the one thing that we can give you on Kairos is the sense that it's the right time for you.